on several occasions i have heard women saying oh i have hormonal imbalance the doctor said i have hormonal imbalance but today i am here to share with you eight hormones that are found in the women and the function of those hormones in a woman's body good day, everyone and welcome back to nurses lecture room youtube channel my name is Miss mary popularly known as a nurse with a difference and i make learning easy and accessible for all my viewers Today, I'm going to be sharing with you eight hormones that are found in women and also the function of these eight hormones. But before we go into details into this class, if you are new on our YouTube channel and these are content you are interested in, please click on that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out. For all my returning subscribers, this is not Mary saying thank you. Let's go there. All right, welcome back. Now let's talk about the different hormones that are found in women. So the first one I want to share with you is estrogen. Yes, I know a lot of women already know about estrogen. On several of my videos, I've measured estrogens and the benefits of estrogens to women. So estrogen is one of the popular hormones that we all know. It is produced in the ovaries, not just ovary, but most of the production takes place in the ovaries. And other places where estrogens are produced are in the adrenal glands and also in fat cells in the body. Estrogen is a very important hormone that is essential at puberty age. It helps with reproductive and sexual functions. If you've been watching my videos, I've talked about how increased estrogen in the body helps with wetness. It helps to prevent vaginal dryness for ladies. It helps to increase sexual drive and things like that on my video. So increased low or high estrogen in the body depends on the time of your cycle and what time of your menstrual cycle you are at a particular time. So estrogen is one of the hormones, is one of the paparazzi hormones that are found in the women. So the second hormone that is not that popular as estrogen, but it's also popular, it's known as progesterone yes progesterone is produced in the ovaries it's produced in the adrenal gland and it is also produced in the placenta there's a high level of progesterone during your ovulation and also in pregnancy yes progesterone prepares the body for pregnancy yes progesterone what prepares the body for pregnancy so if you are ready you are having a low progesterone level it can lead to irregular menstruation it can lead to what irregular menstruation it can lead to fertility issues so progesterone is a very important hormone that helps to stabilize our menstrual cycle so if you are having low progesterone as part of the hormonal imbalance that you might be having as a woman it's important for you to consult your doctor and get important guidance and information the third hormone that is also found in women is testosterone for all those that feel that testosterone is found in the male alone, you lie. Yes, testosterone is the major male hormone. It's found in a higher amount. But in female, you have a little amount of testosterone. It is needed for menstruation. It is needed for sexual drive. It is needed for fertility. It is needed for the red blood cell production. And it is needed for tissue and bone mass formation. So testosterone is not just found in the male alone. It is also found in the female. Then the two hormones I would like to talk about, which is going to be in the fifth position, the fourth position, I mean, is the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. The follicle stimulating hormones and luteinizing hormone, these both hormones are necessary when it comes to the growth of the eggs and also the release of the egg. So when there's an increased release of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, it's going to increase the release of estrogen and progesterone. And estrogen and progesterone, like Elia said, are very, very important hormones that are important for our general bodies as a lady. Estrogen and progesterone as a lady helps with breast development, helps with hair growth in areas that we know, for example, like a pubic area, your armpits. These two hormones are important when it comes to the development of those hair. It also helps with increase in height. It helps with increased fat storage on hips and the buttocks. You see those women that have big hips, big buttocks, that could be as a result of increased testosterone and progesterone. Remember that what makes a woman different from a man is kind of that unique picture, that thick or eight picture. These are as a result of estrogen and progesterone. And you notice that women tend to have this distinct picture when they get to puberty, you see them start developing this breast, these hips and all that. 
these are as a result of estrogen and progesterone but for those women like us that don't have a lot of the hips and um a lot of the buttocks i don't know if you have no estrogen anyway that aside that's just for the fun and also these hormones helps with widening of the pelvics and hips it also helps to increase oil production in the skin that is why you see women they have plenty oil in the skin more than the men all right that is that for that the fifth hormone that is found in women is hcg which is the human coronic gonadotropin so when the uh, the baby implants generally hcg in the bloodstream and also in the urine increases that is why when women do a blood tests when it shows two lines it simply means that there is hcg in your urine and when hcg is in your urine it simply means that you are pregnant okay so that urine test that you do as a woman when to confirm if you are pregnant is as a result of that hormone they are detecting that particular hormone known as human coronic gonadotropin and an increase in this hcg activates the body to produce more estrogen and progesterone now that takes me to the sixth hormone which is relaxing as the name implies relaxation hormone this relaxing hormone is usually released during pregnancy it helps to prevent the uterus from contracting yes so if there was no hormone called relaxing you just be seeing babies the service will just open there's no mucus to or close the service nothing is closing the cervix. the baby will just come and it's not even grow so relaxing is very important it stays in our body during pregnancy and like it's the the production goes away or goes down when um, pregnancy is over so relaxing is what helps the uterus to relax and not contract you get so that is that for relaxing hormone then that takes us to the seventh hormone which i would like to share with you and that is prolactin hormone prolactin hormone is a particular hormone that helps with milk production you see when a baby is born there's an increased milk production this is as a result of prolactin prolactin production increases during pregnancy and also during uh when a baby is sucking the breast it stimulates the body to produce more milk so prolactin is a very important hormone that is important for the babies in particular because there's an increased um, breast milk production. So that is why some women that have increased prolactin in their body, in their hormones, even while they are not pregnant, they might be releasing breast milk from the breast. Okay. Then the last one I have to share with you, which is the number eight. Am I right? Yes. And that is the love hormone, the love hormone. And this love hormone is known as oxytocin oxytocin is a love hormone it helps with mother parents and uh, children bond parents and baby bond mother and baby bond it helps to bond it helps with romance it helps with attachment it helps with trust it's like that's why it's called love hormone this particular hormone is usually released during labor like labor most times that's why you have a, a spike a, an increased release of oxytocin because when there's an increased release of oxytocin it helps the uterus to contract you get now when it contracts the uterus the baby is pushed out and the woman is able to deliver so with that contraction of the uterus the baby cannot come out so that is why during some vaginal beds they give women oxytocin to help contract the uterus because that hormone known as oxytocin contracts the uterus so in women we produce it naturally but sometimes when it is not enough during labor that is when you see them giving oxytocin injection all right oxytocin is what helps the uterus to contract so these are the eight hormones i quickly and fastly and hurriedly shared with you today and i hope you got value from this video so thank you very much for staying tuned thank you very much for watching this video don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget to share with a friend if you got value for all my returning subscribers this is not messing with you saying thank you bye and see you in our next video